two men who carried out a spree of terrifying robberies across Leeds and kidnapped a man have been jailed for over 30 years. Benjamin Mills, who's 31, fired a gun at a shop worker at the Neil Superstore in Chapel Town in Leeds following a robbery he carried out with his co-accused, Ruin James, on December the 1st, 2018. Leeds Crown Court heard that just after 6pm, the men entered the store and Mills grabbed a customer and held a gun to his head between his eyes while demanding money. The prosecutor, Christopher Dunn, told the court Mills told the owner and shop worker the man would be shot if they did not get the money. He said James passed several packets of cigarettes and change from the till and could be seen on CCTV leaving the shop. In seconds, James comes back and grabbed the charity box and left the shop. Soon after Mills' return of the gun was discharged and narrowly missed a man stood behind the store's till. The bullet hit a number of bottles instead and they smashed. Police attended the store and CCTV from earlier that day showed Mills and James outside at around half three. Mr Dunn said that showed them in the street and the prosecution say they were watching the shop and planning the robbery. The CSI confirmed a firearm had been discharged. Just days later on December the 5th, Mills and James carried out another chilling crime and kidnapped a man from his own home in Glossop Street in Leeds in the hope of getting some more money. Mr Dunn told the court the man heard a knock on his door and when he answered, he pushed back into the house by Mills and James, who he did not know before the attack. The prosecutor said Mills pushed a silver handgun towards him and James was holding a large knife. Both were shouting, where's the money? He told them they must have got the wrong address, but Mills went upstairs and James took the man to a kitchen chair. When Mills came back down, he held a gun to the left-hand side of the man's head and shouted, I will smoke you. The man heard a loud bang and he was struck with something to his left temple. Forensic investigations later concluded that the gun had been discharged in the house. Mr Dunn said the man started to panic and wanted to get out. He told them that he had a friend in Chapel Allerton who had money. James and Mills took the man and his partner's car, a VW Passat, and ordered him to direct them. He took them to his sister's home and when she did not answer, directed them around the corner to another house and he made his escape and flagged down a police car. Mr Dunn said when he got home, the car wasn't there. The police recovered a bullet fragment that matched to the pistol used in the other robbery which was at Neil Superstore. The next day, Mills and James were spotted in Mushroom Street in Leeds by plainclothed police officers who gave chase. James was the first to be detained and found in possession of a black lock knife. Mr Dunn said Mills was pursued for some distance. He was shouted at to stop but he didn't and began to put his hand into his man bag. At that point officers thought he was going to use a gun on them. Their restraint is highly commendable and it's fortunate he was not shot dead by the police. Mills was detained and in his bag police found a pistol, a lock knife and the key to the VW Passat they had taken from their victim the day before. In his police interview, Mills claimed he had no knowledge of either robbery and had been at a bookies before his arrest when someone had put the firearm into his bag without him knowing and he had felt it during the police chase and was trying to get rid of it. He also claimed another person gave him the keys to the car as they were going to sell him the car. Both defendants were charged that Mills was convicted at two separate trials of kidnap, possession of a firearm at the time he committed that offence, possession of a firearm, possession of a firearm with intent to endanger life, possession of a firearm with intent to endanger life, robbery at Neil Superstore and possession of a firearm at the time he committed that offence. At a previous plea trial and preparation hearing, he pleaded guilty to possession of a prohibited firearm, possession of ammunition without a firearm certificate, possession of a firearm when prohibited, possession of ammunition when prohibited and having an article with a blade or point. James pleaded guilty at a plea trial and preparation hearing to robbery, threatening another with an article with a blade or point and having an article with a blade and point, which was the lock knife which was recovered upon his arrest. The court heard both defendants had a raft of previous conviction with Mills, previously been convicted of possession with the intent to supply heroin, shoplifting and assault occasion actual bodily harm and James previously being convicted for possession of a knife and three robberies two of which were carried out on schoolboys. In mitigation for Mills, his solicitor Richard Brigden told the court he had a chaotic upbringing and was diagnosed with ADHD and had a conviction for supplying heroin when he was just 13 years old. He appealed to the recorder not to find him as a dangerous offender. In mitigation for James, his solicitor Robin Fries told the court for his client possessing a knife had become the norm for him because of his lifestyle he was leading and the people he was associating himself with. He added that James had been on remand in custody since pleading guilty at a plea trial and preparation hearing in 2018 and has effectively served a three-year sentence. 
He said he has a very supportive family who've stood by him. He is somebody who's capable of putting this life behind him. The recorder sentenced Mills to 12 years for the first offences carried out at Neil Superstore and 13 years for the offences carried out at Glossop Street. The judge ordered these sentences to be served consecutively, making it a total of 25 years. Mills will have to serve two-thirds of his sentence in custody before being released on licence. The recorder told him there is a significant risk of harm to members of the public. James was sentenced to six years and nine months in prison for his part in the crimes and he will have to serve half of his sentence on licence. Following their sentencing, Detective Superintendent Fiona Gaffney of West Yorkshire Police Firearms Preventive Investigations team said the criminal use of firearms is something we will always treat extremely seriously and do everything we can to bring those responsible to justice. The incidents in this case will have been absolutely terrifying for members of the public who were unfortunate enough to be targeted. Not only were the victims threatened at gunpoint with a loaded weapon but live rounds were recklessly discharged by Mr Mills on both occasions without any thought to potentially deadly consequences that could have resulted. Said both men were quickly identified as suspects and a firearms operation was put in place to locate and detain them. Those arrests took place in what was clearly a very challenging and dynamic situation that was swiftly brought to a safe conclusion through the professionalism and cool-headedness of the firearm officers who carried this out. Said a thorough and detailed investigation by specialist firearm offence detectives built up a comprehensive package of evidence that has finally seen both men held accountable for their action and given significant jail terms. We hope this successful outcome will reassure the victims of these offences and the wider community and also send a very clear message to others of how seriously the police and courts will treat offences involving firearms. So guys, this is a new story coming from Leeds where two men have been sentenced for a total of over 30 years for their crimes, one man getting 25 years for their crimes. And in another story coming from Birmingham, a man who goes by the name of Zachel Reed, who stabbed a company director, Jason Bentley Morrison, to death during a brawl outside a nightclub in Birmingham, has been found guilty of murder following a two-week trial at Birmingham Crown Court. The CCTV showed how Reed was waiting to get into the club just before 3am on August the 22nd last year, just as the victim was leaving after enjoying a night at the Oxford Street Club. The footage showed Reed apparently make a comment to the 25-year-old Jason Bentley Morrison. It's not clear what was said, but the court heard that it prompted the victim to hit him seconds later. Birmingham Crown Court heard how the men squared up to each other in the street before Reed lunged out with a knife, stabbing the victim in the stomach, causing him to collapse. Medics had tried to save his life at the scene, but he tragically died at 10.30 that same day. Reed handed himself in at Perry Bar Police Station at around 6pm on August the 25th and was arrested on suspicion of murder, though he refused to answer any questions. The 30-year-old gave officers a prepared statement denying he was present when the victim had been stabbed. Detectives pieced together CCTV showing the attack on Reed's movements before and after and he was found guilty by a jury after a trial at Birmingham Crown Court. Detective Inspector Hannah Whitehouse led the investigation said we may never know what was said to Jason in the moments before his death. There's no evidence he knew his killer or that he was involved in any criminal activity which may have motivated this attack. But again, we have a case where what started as a fist fight has quickly become a violent murder or because one of those involved, Reed, decided to use a knife. The harm that knife crime does to families and entire communities is enormous. It's devastated Jason's family and countless other families in the West Midlands and beyond. West Midlands Police will continue to reduce knife crime through education and enforcement to prevent more families going through what Jason's had to suffer. The family of Mr Bentley Morrison, who was a director to a number of rental property companies, said at the time of his death to know Jason was to love him. Jason's positive and passionate outlook on life was inspiring and infectious to everyone he encountered. His warmth and compassion extended far beyond his ties of family and if you were to ask anyone who's Jason, they would share the funniest and heartwarming stories of his reach and impact on their lives. He was the stranger in the street who offered to help you carry your shopping home. He was the friend that rescheduled his workday to drive you to the doctor and make sure everything was okay. He was the young entrepreneur who taught financial literacy and investing in property to those struggling to see a path forward and so much more. So Mr Reed is going to be sentenced next Wednesday. So guys, this is a story with regards to a man who's been found guilty of murder following a stabbing outside a nightclub in Birmingham. Let me know what you guys think. It's your boy GC.
Keep it locked, keep it real. It's regarding Levi Belfield and the confessions that he made a couple of weeks ago with regards to murdering a woman and her daughter. So go check it out guys and if you can please subscribe to that channel and check out the other videos on there.